Like the pine trees lining the winding road I got a name I got a name Like the singing bird in the crow Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you to those of you who have supported my channel by liking and subscribing. Your support allows me to continue to bring you fountain pen reviews as I am unsponsored on this channel, so thanks. Today is actually my 65th birthday, and therefore today is a Grail Pen Day. But first, what is a Holy Grail Pen, or a Holy Grail anything? Of course, the Holy Grail refers to the legend of the cup used by Jesus at the Last Supper, or that Joseph of Arimathea used to capture Christ's blood at the crucifixion. Here may be found the last words of Joseph of Arimathea. He who is valiant and pure of spirit may find the Holy Grail in the castle of... Uh, he must have died while carving it. Oh, come on. Well, that's what it says. Look, if he was dying, he wouldn't bother to carve arg. He'd just say it. So a holy grail of anything represents something of value to you that is highly sought after and difficult to obtain. Like the quest to find the holy grail itself by King Arthur. I don't suppose you could uh, tell us where we might find a, um, find a, a, a um, a, uh... A what? A, 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 a grail? Yes, I think so. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 yes. Oh, oh, thank oh, you. Oh, that's fine. Oh, Thanks. Thank Splendid. You. And Indiana Jones. He chose poorly. Or Jack Colton fighting a crocodile for El Corazon. Or even Phil Moskowitz's quest for the world's greatest egg salad. Gangsters have stolen my secret recipe for egg salad. And not only that, they kill, they maim, and they call information for numbers they could easily look up in the book. You want egg salad? I'll give you egg salad. Did you bring the mayonnaise? Mayonnaise? I told you to take a jar. Why is he weird? Well, never mind. If there's none on board, forget it. Use Miracle Whip. <laughs> Name three presidents. Roosevelt, McKinley. Lincoln. The problem with Grail searches is that they spawn sequels faster than Chuck Lorre's word processor. Because once the grail is obtained, another grail will appear on the horizon and the chase is on yet again. But today we're going to look at Indiana Doug's holy grail pen, the Pelican M800, right now. So my birthday is coming up in a couple of weeks. And this is a milestone birthday. This is my 65th. And I thought, well, I need to treat myself to something special. One of the grail pens that I've really admired over the last number of years has been a Pelican. I've reviewed a couple of Pelicans. Neither of them were mine. They were on loan. And they were a bit small for me as well. But I always lusted after an M800 Pelican. The combination of cult pens, 10% off, free shipping, and remarkably no duty or taxes from uh, cult pens uh, with DHL. I'm totally surprised at this. I was expecting it to be held ransom and it arrived at my door with no no duty notices at all. And here it is and I'm really excited to open this. Oh, 
Nice white box. This is kind of a, uh, a gray goldish matte finish with the Pelican logo. Top comes off. Guarantee, warranty. It is a three year manufacturer's warranty against manufacturing defects. Yeah, it has a pen pouch, moments of joy, information about various models. This is a soft faux leather pouch with Pelican embossed and the Pelican logo and this elastic and tog. Oh my goodness. You never know until you get them in your hands how big they are, how beautiful they are. But immediately I'm struck by grandeur of this pen. And there's the medium 18 karat gold nib. That's quite a substantial tip. And of course, this is a piston filler. That works like a charm. Very smooth. No ratcheting. I'm excited to do a review of this pen. So as this is my Grail pen, I thought I'd do the first inking of this pen on camera. But before I ink the pen, I thought I'd show you the removable nib unit that's on these. So let's uh, grab this and unscrew. And you can see there the nib unit. Just snug it back and we're ready to fill the pen. And so we open the piston. It's a good opportunity to show you the translucent nature of this celluloid. You can see through there. So get our ink open. Whoa, that's tight. Holy moly. Holy cliche. A beautiful blue ink. I'm going to dip it up to the, the section so the entire feed is in the ink. And I'm going to screw it down again. It should fill up. I'm going to do it once more. Yep, there are a couple of bubbles there. So the second time through, should have released all the air that was in the feed. Get out some paper and do our first writing. relatively wet very smooth and that nib is very very interesting it has a slight downturn to it of course I'll have to measure this I'll measure those with my chart and see what they are but at first blush it looks like a 0.6 millimeter something like that my first guess it is just as smooth as glass yeah it does bounce a little bit so I'm gonna write with this for a couple of weeks before I do the review and we'll see you in on. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen. And because this is my Holy Grail fountain pen, I want to give some background about Pelican and how this pen is manufactured. There's a wonderful YouTube video by Joost Applebaum, which has a factory tour of how these pens are made, and I'll link that video in the description. I'm also going to add a link to the webpage The Pelican's Perch by Joshua E. Danley. It is a wealth of information on everything Pelican, and since this is the first Pelican I've owned, I've mined it for a lot of great information. And a big shout out and thank you to Joshua for giving me permission to use portions of his website and his images in this video. But I want to highlight a couple of things that make this pen grail worthy. And the first is the nibs. This is not a Yovo, a Bach, or a Schmidt. This is made in-house by Pelican. There are just a handful of fountain pen companies that make their own nibs. There is an excellent chart on Daniel Pye's website that lists who makes the nibs for the top brands. I'll link that chart in the description as well, but the most prominent brands that make their own nibs are Aurora, Lamy, Montblanc, Parker, Pelican, Pilot, Platinum, Sailor, 
and Waterman. Arguments over which are the best uh, will keep the internet forums buzzing for decades, of course. What word could be so important at this late hour? Someone is wrong on the internet. But it's clear that when a company makes their own nibs, they take extra care to ensure their quality, and Pelican is no exception. The next thing I'd like to highlight is the barrel material. I'll speak more about this when I get to the parts and features, but this barrel isn't injection molded plastic or precious resin, and it isn't turned acrylic. It's celluloid, and it is a celluloid that's made in an extremely interesting and involved way. It is unique in its alternating opaque and translucent striping, but what I find amazing is how it feels. You can feel the difference between this barrel and other pens. It is warm and silky and almost feels soft, even though it isn't. We'll talk about the differences between cellulose, acetate, and acrylic resins in a moment. And the third thing I want to highlight that makes this pen grail worthy is its overall design the shape and the balance, the visual and the physical. This is the result of 92 years of experience in making fountain pens since the first Model 100 in 1929. And yes, I know Pelican existed before that from the 1800s. Overall, this is a handsome, classic, stately fountain pen that is both eye-catching and understated. Let's look at the details of this Pelican M800. From the top, we see the classic Pelican cap finial. And let's just spend a moment here because these unique finials have a history to them. The Pelican cap finial has evolved over the decades and is thus one of the ways to date a Pelican, other than buying at dinner, of course. Hello, I'm Steve. I'll be your server this evening. May I start you off with a cocktail? <coughs> you don't work here, do you? I do not. Joshua's Pelican Perch has great information on this. You can see how the Pelican logo has evolved over the years and how the top finial treatment has changed as well. The Pelican M200 that belonged to my friend Ron's dad, Dennis, and I reviewed last year, was from the late 80s and sported a derby cap with an etched and gold-filled Pelican logo with two chicks. That's how it can be dated to that era. The number of chicks on the logo can help with the dates. After 2003, Pelicans only came with one chick. Perhaps that's because Pelican finally understood the difficulties in dating more than one chick at a time. That's so funny, I forgot to laugh! <laughs> In 2010, Pelican changed the Suvaran models, like this M800, to either gold or palladium metal cap finial with an etched logo of a Pelican with one chick. The finial on the modern Suvaran, which translates in English as Sovereign, is the domed and etched top. Then there's a step down to this tapering ring, and then another step down to the ring that attaches the clip. The whole cap finial ends up looking like a stylized crown, which is in keeping with the Sovereign theme. It's very attractive, and I've only seen it imitated on this Chinese-built crocodile fountain pen. But there is a new pen from Hongdian that seems to imitate the Suvaran in this model 960. I have one of these on the way, so it will make for an interesting comparison. The clip is uniquely shaped to resemble a pelican's beak, and is another great example of how, when form and function merge perfectly, it makes the overall design quite sublime indeed. This slight upturn on the end of the beak slash clip both accentuates the beak-like metaphor and helps slip the clip into a pocket. And the clip is nicely springy and usable. The black injection molded plastic cap tapers up slowly to a double ring cap band. All of the hardware on the M800 is 24 karat gold plated. There's a thin ring separated from the wider ring uh, which is engraved with Pelican, Souverain, and Germany in deeply cleanly cut block letters. And the ring extends all the way to the end of the cap. There's a very small step down to the barrel, which isn't exactly straight, as it has a very slight two millimeter bulge in the center 
and then tapers down to two more gold rings that have precisely the same gap between them as the gap between these two rings here. And these rings are at the top of the piston knob, which is the same black plastic of the cap and tapers to a domed bottom. Let's take a moment to look at this rolled celluloid barrel. I mentioned earlier that this barrel material is unique and feels unique. These pinstripes seem to be the standard Suvaran barrel finish and the standard colors are green, blue, and gray. The gray striped Suvaran is actually called the Stressaman, named after the gray and black pinstripes of the morning suit or stroller fashion of the early 20th century as espoused by the likes of Winston Churchill and Gustav Stresemann, who was the Chancellor of the German Weimar Republic. There is a German language video which shows the process by which this celluloid is manufactured. It starts with a sheet of cellulose acetate made for Pelican in Italy and then is rolled and sealed into a tube and then cut, finished and polished into a barrel. The dark stripes are actually translucent, so you can see your ink levels, and the blue is opaque. The opaque blue stripes aren't just plain blue, but have a subtle sparkle and chatoyance that gives the entire barrel a sheen and variation that's really stunning. It also creates an optical illusion that at some angles makes the stripes look like they're a spiral. So what is the difference between cellulose acetate and acrylic resin or polyester plastics? The simple answer is that cellulose acetate is plant-based, which is in this case cotton, where other plastics are petroleum-based. For many years before the petroleum-based plastics were invented, cellulose acetate, which was invented in the late 19th century, was the basis for a movie film and has been since replaced by polyester. It is still fascinating to me that the difference between the celluloid and the precious resin or acrylic petroleum based materials can be actually felt. The celluloid is definitely smoother and warmer to the touch. Now this might just be how Pelican finishes the celluloid, I don't know. I just know this feels like luxury to me. The cap unscrews with one simple turn to reveal a short black plastic tapering section with a flare and a gold ring towards a number six size 18 karat gold nib and black plastic feed. Before we look at this incredible nib more closely, let's look at the feed for a moment. Yes, this is plastic, but it doesn't resemble other typical plastic feeds. This feed, again custom in-house made by Pelican, resembles ebonite. It's not ebonite, I checked. It's actually plastic, but I suspect it's a superior form of plastic that Pelican has worked on to make it more hydroscopic than your typical plastic feed. Now let's look more closely at this nib. It is simply a work of art. The two-toned 18 karat gold nib is deeply engraved with flourishing scroll work. The Pelican logo inside a circle and 18C-750 indicating the gold content and an M for medium. The nib and feed are part of a nib assembly that unscrews very easily for replacement, cleaning or swapping. Plus with the nib unit out, you can get at the ink chamber to speed the process of cleaning. This is a piston filler and it has a good ink capacity of 1.2 milliliters and the piston works extremely smoothly. Inside the cap, we see a plastic cap liner and the cap posts deeply and very securely and the pen is incredibly well balanced in the hand. The section is a bit short, but these threads are hardly noticeable and there's barely even a step down so your grip can wander up and down the barrel of this pen very, very easily. The flare at the end of the section keeps your fingers from moving further. Unposted, the pen is just as nicely balanced, and I can't decide whether I like writing with it posted or unposted. I do both, and the writing experience is exceptional. I bought this pen from Cult Pens for $401.98 Canadian, which is the price minus 10%. 
and I got free shipping and it arrived from England to Calgary in five days with no duty, taxes or extra DHL charges. I'm really stoked about it. Now you too can get 10% off your purchases from Cult Pens. Uh, just go to the description of my video and I show you a link where you can go to get the code. To afford this purchase for my birthday gift to me, I sold my Maiora Impronte Oversize and put my March YouTube revenue towards the pen, which brought it into the realm of the Holy Grail Batman It Is Possible range. Holy red herring. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Pelican M800 with a Leonardo Momento Zero, a Twisby Diamond 580, a Moonman M600S, and a Pen BBS 355. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. All of these pens, with the exception of the Leonardo and the Pelican, are challenged with posting. And in this group, the Pelican is the only gold nib, and the Twisby is the only number five size nib, with the rest of them being number six. Now let's look at some measurements, and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Pelican M800 Ouvrier, and it has an 18 carat gold nib. Let's check the wetness. The pen is decently wet. It's not super wet, but I've also found that this ink, which is Pelican Topaz, is fairly dry. This nib is uber smooth. with just a hint of feedback which is which is very unique and very subtle um, and not at all like uh, say the platinum gold nib feedback that you get out of that nib I like it because when I have a nib that is too glassy I find my lines aren't controlled and a little bit of grip to the page little texture helps my hand from sliding off the page. Also, and this is a unique experience for me, this nib is slightly stub-like in its, the way it behaves on the page. It's hard to see, it's very subtle, but it feels like a mini stub. It might be how that nib is cut, I'm not sure, but I really like it. Here are some close matches to this Pelican Topaz from inkswatch.com but I also might decide to swap it out for a Roshizuku Asagao uh, though as I think that ink might match the blue barrel better are there any other M800 blue fans out there or owners what are you using for a good ink match with this pen please let me know in the comments as to line variation this pen does spring a little bit so you can get a little bit of line variation out of it. It feels like it's not stiff like steel, but it's also not a flex. Just a slight bounce. But the overall feeling is of silky smoothness. This line is 0.6 millimeters in width, which makes it a Western medium, big surprise. 
or a Japanese medium to broad. And for our quote, in some reverse writing. Not very scratchy at all. It's very smooth, but boy, it's really, really dry and barely gets any ink at all. And some quick writing. No issues whatsoever. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? I was anxious about this pen as I had elevated the pen in my mind as a holy grail pen. I began to worry that I might have set myself up for disappointment. I had never held a Pelican M800 in my hands before. I had never written with a Pelican gold nib. But for a couple of years I've been watching, reading, researching, and listening. I knew I wanted an M800 or an M1000. My experience with my Leonardo Momento Zero Grande, I found that that pen was almost too big. I decided that the M800 was probably the sweet spot, not too big, not too small. But I was still concerned that I might have overestimated the grailness of this pen, so I was really anxious when I first opened the box and held this pen and then put ink in it. I'm pleased to say that I'm overwhelmed with this pen. It is flawless. I've been writing with it constantly for two weeks and I haven't found a flaw. I'm searching for some criticism here. Uh, perhaps it's too expensive. Well, it certainly isn't cheap, certainly. Is it overpriced at $400 Canadian? For what you get, I don't think so. This is an exceptionally well-engineered and designed luxury writing instrument that will last decades and decades. But the most important thing is, how does it feel in the hand and with ink on the page? Again, it is flawless, effortless. The pen glides, the pen balances, and I just love touching it. Ew. I find excuses to write something, anything, lists and lists and specifications, data copied from the internet, anything. I keep a notepad and this pen next to me while I'm watching TV and I doodle with it during the commercials. So there you have it, my grail pen, the Pelican M800, a flawless pen. Is there another grail on the horizon? Well, I can't think of one at the moment. My search may have ended. We'll see. Well, on second thoughts, let's not go to Camelot. It is a silly place. Right. Right. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. And then wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote. I made this.